And wellity, wellity, welcome folks. Welcome to a brand new Let's Play. I'm Grandmaster Scotte, and this... This is one of the most unique horror experiences you will ever find. This is D. Made in 1995 by Warp and produced by Acclaim in, over here in England and in the US. This is a very strange horror game, very different to what you might expect from the PS1, but is a game that I know you are going to love. Now I'm going to do a bit of editing trickery here due to the emulator not working very well with this game, so you're going to have to bear with me because of, well as you can see, this problem. For some reason, because this game is pretty much all FMV, it juts everything down into a box down there. So I'm going to have to cut while I readjust my recording box, and I will see you in a second with the start of the game. Toodaloo. And editing trickery achieved. So this is D. I'm going to have to run you through our story here. The time is 1997, and it's Los Angeles. And this is a hospital. A hospital that contains this girl, whose name is Laura, contains her dad, Richter. And Richter has gone right ahead and committed mass murder. Nobody knows why, and for some reason they think it's a good idea to send in an unarmed, unarmoured, untrained girl to try and talk her father out of it. And she's trying to wonder why her father decided to go whole killing spree thing. And as we can see, it's quite clear that Richter has left his handiwork behind. Ooh. And there's a little bit more. Now it says he's taken host hostages, but eh, I'm seeing most of them lying on the floor at the moment. So Laura, obviously, is upset by this whole thing. Not that I can blame her, of course, but she still decides to go in. No police backup, no escort, nothing. Not the smartest move by the LAPD's best and brightest. Give today! I think there's plenty of giving on the floor at the moment. So we're wandering through the hospital. This is all CGI, by the way. This is famous for being the first game to be fully CGI, which is the reason why it comes on three bloody discs, so I'm prepared for some disc swapping. And so we're all wandering around, looking all over the place. And ooh, what's that? Appears to be some kind of slime creature. Now why on earth would that be in the middle of a hospital? That's supposed to be in the mortuary. And Laura seems mildly perplexed by this whole thing. And oh god, she's gonna touch it. Laura, you're breaking the horror movie rules. Don't touch the scary thing. Oh god, she touched it and is eating her. And it seems to have teleported her to a castle. And she seems a little bit shocked by this. So this is where the game starts. As you can see, we control Laura mainly through transitions, like you press the but you press the directional buttons and the action button to do things, and then the FMV plays to show the transition for that. Now at the moment we have two things in our inventory. We have a pocket watch which tells us how much time we have for the game. And we have a compact which will give us clues if we need them. But we do not need them, and we will continue onward. So what's this over here that we find? Okay, we turn to the kitchen table, and... Ooh, appears to be something here. It's a bowl of water. Ooh, and our reflection. <gasps> it turned to blood! How mysterious! So let's come on back from there, from the freed, freaky blood bowl. And let's continue on this way, see what we can find. Step. 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 Ooh, we got a cutscene. Someone's Laura. around here. <gasps> Laura. Laura! Wake up! Laura. Who, who could that be? Laura. Hey, don't need to yell. This is your father. Darth Vader? <gasps> it's a see-through head. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's meant Go to be see-through or not. You must not cross over to this side. 
What side? The other side? This is another world born of my own mind. Yeah, very poor taste in worlds, by the way, Dad. Go back. Come further, and your world will be closed off from you. Laura, I'm... You're what? Dying? Evil? Possibly even... Our father? We will never know. But it is good to mention that we cannot actually leave, so there's not much point in him telling us to do that. So, we're wandering through here, and there's another corridor. Now, which direction should we go? Let's have a look to the left, see what we can find. And it's a... oh, it's another... it's a mirror. Can we do anything with the mirror? Oh, we can. <gasps> There's a hand. I, I saw that. Uh, oh god, it's that scene from Clock Tower where the freaky mirror man tries to get you. Ah! <gasps> How about we don't go near the mirror then? Well, let's have a look see what's on this side. Ooh, a keg. Let's get drunk. Let's get drunk. And it seems to be it's missing a handle. Ah, no booze. That's just mean. Ooh, but there's a doorway and a very spiky wall. I'm sure nothing bad will come of this. Do do do. <gasps> oh god, we're gonna die, we're gonna die, we're gonna die, oh my god, we're gonna die! Are we dead? I think we're dead. Is that dead? No, phew, we're not dead. Is it me or those little that made a pencil lead? So, looks to me that we can't go that way. So, it's so like we got a one track mind at the moment, and that one track is telling us to go up those stairs that we saw. So, let's just slowly turn around. That's tapless, so we can't use that. Ooh, a chandelier. Or a candelabra, if you will. Yeah, I'm staying away from you, freaky mirror. No, I said away from the freaky mirror. And up the freaky stairs we go. So this game, as I said before, was made by Kenji Eno, who was known for being quite a loony when it came to his games, especially with this one D. Very famously, he released the game, well, he released the game out to the ratings board for printing and checking all that so he could give it a rating and released a clean version so that it could get a teen rating. Now this teen rating was for a, like I said, a clean version. It came with all gore and images removed from it, but when it came to printing, at the very last moment he switched it out for the original master disc, which would mean that basically he managed to get a gory game rated teen. If that ain't ballsy, I don't know what is. So we've got a set of drawers here, see what we can find. Um, let's use... Are we going to get to pick, or is she going to pick for us? Draw number one, what do we find? Huh, a glowing bug. And, oh my god, we're having a trip! Oh, it's in my eyeball. Something weird's going on here. Bad mushrooms. And now we're eating a steak. And people are screaming at us. And slashing the letter D. And now we're seeing things from the steak's perspective. Is this some kind of art house game? And there's the thing that we picked up, and... We're screaming, and now Laura's a child, I think? What the heck did that mean? That was just freaky. Now, can we actually do anything with these drawers? Okay, so we can pick which drawer we want. Uh, let's search the first one. Ooh, there's a piece of paper. And I assume that's our found something sheet. I'm sure we will find a use for this later. Now, the other drawers, we don't really need anything from them from the moment. But what we do need 
is to slowly turn around. Also, I'm loving the fact that the chairs are made of the same material as the walls. That's just a lot of, you know, a lot of good designs right there. So we're not going to go out the door. We need to maneuver around so that we can get to the fireplace. Because there's a little something in the fireplace that we want. So let's have a look inside. And we've got some ashes and, ooh, a key. Ooh, I, I'm with Laura on this one. I wouldn't trust that key. And, oh, nothing happened. Ooh, it's got a little gem in it. How nice. So we've got our key. And as we have seen, there's only really one door that we can use that on. Well, two actually. But I'm about to show you the other door that we could use it on. Aren't I classy? And ooh, nice big picture there. Looks like it's made out of stone, I think. So out we go. We want to go back downstairs. Okay, we're just walking right into the picture. And in we go. Now, before we go downstairs, I just want to show you what's in this room. Because who, who knows? Might be something cool. Could be our dad. Let's see, we've got light. Is there something on the door? Jesus Christ! Who puts a spike door there? And who leaves a body stuck there? Oh god, it's gone through the back of his head and his mouth. And his neck. Both both parts in his neck. That's just cruel. That's just cruel. Look at his buddies in there. Ow! Don't slam it shut again. Jeez, Laurie, look at this. cruel as the people have stuck him in there. Who would design a room like that? Ow! Anyway, away from the um, impalements that seem to be a weird interest of this house, we're going to go back downstairs into that dining room part. Barry Burton would be proud. Clip clop, clip clop. Probably shouldn't have come here in heels. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to go back to that bowl that we saw which turned into blood, because we have a use for that, surprisingly. So now let's go into the bowl. I know it takes a while to get to anything in this game. So over the blood bowl again, and now we activate our inventory, and we use the paper. Let's see what it does. So we lay it on the paper, and four to two. Now what on earth could that mean? And it's sinking to the bottom of the bowl. Okay, we're just going to leave that there. So we should probably go back upstairs. So four to two. I think that was Roman numeral for four. Should be. It's been a while since I did anything with Roman numerals. So we're going to slowly plod our way back upstairs. Kind of wish there was a run button in this, but what can you do? There's no way to skip the FMVs, so... Ah, well. And back upstairs we go, past the spiky room. So... I should probably talk more about the game. Um, Laura was an interesting idea. They wanted to make her to be the first ever digital actress. A video game character that had the same design but appeared in different games. And, to her credit, she appeared in three of Warp's games. Appearing in this one, D. Appearing in the Saturn exclusive um, Enemy Zero, which is kind of a pseudo sequel, if you will. And appearing in the canonical sequel in the Dreamcast, D2. So, kind of, yeah, got some good gigs out of it. Nope. Ah, Laura. Go to the draw. Okay, so... We want to open number four. And nothing in there. And then we want to open... Number two. And does that work? Yes! 
We got a crank of some kind. Because we always love cranks. Ooh, and it's a hex-shaped crank. That means we can shut off the. That means we can shut off the water to the outside. So now we have our crank. We want to go back downstairs. And where did we say that we needed a crank? Why it was downstairs where that cake thing was. So let's go there. Out the door we go. And other stories about this particular game. Um, the music for it was designed by... God, I know this one. Damn it, I forgot. I'll put it in an annotation who designed the music. Um, supposedly, uh, Kenji Eno managed to convince him to do the score after hours and hours and hours of talking in a bedroom in a hotel. And after a while, he just said, Okay, fine, I'll do it, just please go away. So, like I said, Kenji, kind of a madman when it comes to his video games, but, hey, his artistic vision shows he made quite a few good games and burnt a few bridges, as I will explain in, a ne in another part. So, we'll use the crank on the giant keg. And crank it up. That's one squeaky crank. Oh, bit of lag there. As you can see, it retracts the pencil spikes. So, now that we've done that... So, let's go cut back and see if we can examine just what we are able to walk into now. So, let's take a wander down here. Wandering and wandering. And we find a door with a 78 on it, I think. Let's give this a little examination, see if we can get this open. Dunk, dunk. Kind of question why you would wear heels to an evil castle, but still. Ooh, very nice calligraphy there. 78. And there doesn't seem to be a door handle on this door, so... Looks like we're going to need a key of some kind. Uh, you want to open your eyes, Laura? Probably help you see the, the door. So let's turn around and go back upstairs, and I think that'll be a good time to end the part. Because I'm going to have a lot of fun doing this game, I hopefully will see you having a lot of fun watching it, and who knows, we might even find ourselves getting spooked. So, I have been Grandmaster Scott A. This has been D, and I thank you so very, very much for watching. Good night, everybody.